name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. We are gathered here today with open hearts and as grateful people who acknowledge and appreciate our gift of freedom. May we always be reminded of the, of the countless blessings bestowed upon this great country and how fortunate we are to live in a free, democratic society. Our gracious God, we stand here together as your humble creation, not just as people of different race, ethnic backgrounds, and religious beliefs, but people of one nation who stand under one God. Together, we now pray for our city councilman, Mr. Mark Jonai, and his family. We ask that you guide him and bless him with the wisdom to successfully lead, inspire him with the knowledge to discern right from wrong, and give him the courage to exercise best judgment while committed to the virtue of justice. Grant him the strength to persevere and thrive when struggles arise, and the ability to lead in ways that unify and foster communal harmony. Almighty God, we honor this commitment and service, and we have confidence that a great representative stands before us. We humbly ask that you accept our prayers and bless the people of this nation. Amen. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, I want to congratulate and wish the very best uh, to the Jonai family. And uh, let's give another round of applause to the new council of the first official Paul Jonai. You know, uh, I've uh, worked on a lot of campaigns uh, over my uh, 30 years uh, in public service. Uh, but I don't think I've ever worked harder uh, on any campaign, I guess, other than my own, uh, than Mark Jonah. And uh, when I look around the room today, uh, many of you were there hand in hand uh, working for a man uh, that we all believe in. We all believe in Mark Jonai uh, because we understand his work ethic. We believe in Mark Jonai because we understand that someone uh, who gave up a very successful career in business to get and dedicate his life uh, to public service is someone who's very, very special. Uh, I still remember uh, Mark and I were fishing outside of City Island uh, when he was contemplating running for the assembly. Uh, believe it or not, uh, I tried to talk him out of it. I, uh, see, his wife is smiling. Uh, but then again, as I heard Mark and spoke to Mark uh, that very long day, uh, I realized uh, that he was dedicated to public service. Uh, he was dedicated to the fact that his family came here from Albania uh, with a very simple truth, uh, to make a better life for their family and to become proud Americans. And he wanted to give something back. Uh, he wanted to give back uh, to a country, to a community uh, that did so much for him. And I watched him run and win the assembly seat. Uh, I watched him work so hard uh, for this community. Uh, and I will tell you one thing, uh, that the people of the 13th Council Matter District will certainly get their money's worth with Mark Jonah. <laughs> you know, Mark is dedicated. Uh, Mark is dedicated to all the communities of the 13th Council Matter District, which I kind of call uh, the jewels of the Bronx. Uh, they're all communities uh, where people work hard, where people value family, where people value education, where people get up every day and work hard, and they expect government to work hard for them as well. Uh, they want to protect their quality of life. Uh, they want to make sure their communities are places where they're proud uh, to raise their children and proud to have their seniors live out their golden years in comfort and dignity. And you know something, there's no one, but no one, who's going to work harder uh, to preserve that quality of life than our council member, Mark Jonai. <laughs> Jonai understands. Mark Jonai will fight each and every day for everyone uh, in this community. Uh, Mark Jonai will understand that the quality of life that you enjoy is most important to him as well. And you know something, uh, with uh, the next couple of years coming about, and uh, we're talking about things like citing homeless shelters, uh, more affordable housing or low-income housing, more overdevelopment, there is no one who's going to be more of a wake-up call to City Hall to fight for our values and send a message loud and clear, you're not going to dump on the Bronx any longer. But there's also very, another important reason. Uh, why Mark Jonai's election is so special. Mark Jonai is a first. A first. The first Albanian-American 
to be elected to the city council. And that's something that's very, very special. You know, I know in Washington, you know, we get a lot of talk on uh, who is a good immigrant, who is a bad immigrant, uh, who is a good American or a bad American. Uh, what country uh, should we seek immigrants to come from? Well, you know, as I look around this room, the Norwegian people are great people, but there's not a lot of Norwegians here in the Bronx. <laughs> but I want to say also that uh, clearly, uh, Mark Jonah's heritage, uh, Mark Jonah's immigrant roots, are something that we should all be very proud of. Because we should all remember that someone somewhere before us, uh, there is an immigrant woman with a child on her arms, a bundle on her back, with tears in her eyes because she was scared of the world that she was entering. Uh, that holds true today as it did yesteryear. Because we still have immigrants coming for the very same reason. They come here to practice their religion as they see fit. They come here for economic opportunities. They come here to be part of the American fabric. And I want to tell you here and now, we in the Bronx, we as New Yorkers, we as Americans, will welcome every single one of them. So again, I want to congratulate uh, my dear friend, uh, someone uh, who uh, I believe uh, is going to be a great council member, uh, someone who I believe is going to hold the values uh, that we hold true here in the 13th Councilmatic District, and someone who will get up each and every morning with a very simple truth, to fight for the residents of the 13th Councilmatic District. Thank you all, and God bless Mark Turner, I understand. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Miriam Bremer. I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm trying, Mark. Every time I ask Mark how to say something in Albania, I'm afraid he's going to give me the wrong word to embarrass me on purpose. <laughs> he hasn't seen me wrong yet, though. Good afternoon, everyone. I, what, a, what an honor to be here and a pleasure. Um, as the county leader here in the borough of the Bronx, I am truly excited about where we are politically uh, as an organization and as a county. When you look at the level of talent and the dedicated work of the elected officials in this borough, it, it, it exemplifies and it demonstrates how we have achieved uh, some of the successes that have happened in our community. When you look at the growth of our borough, the investments in our borough, the drop in crime, uh, the job growth, the unemployment drop, just all the things that have made the quality of life better. We have work to do still, but so many things have moved in the right direction and it is because of the unity it is because of the dedication and the hard work of so many of the elected officials who are in this room. And yes, someone who served with me in Albany and now is going to distinguish himself as the chairman of the Small Business Committee and the City Council in Mark Jonah. So I really need everybody to give a round of applause to the elected leaders that are in the room. Thank you for your work on behalf of the people of the Bronx. This is an interesting time in our country, in our state, in our city. We are seeing the headlines the discord, the disconnect, the inability of people to disagree, to get in a room and find common ground. Nobody in the community, when they go out and vote, expects that the people that they elect can't work with others. We know that the job we are sending them to is to go out there with people who disagree with them or who have separate interests from them and find common ground and come to a deal that addresses the majority of our needs. Whether it's immigration reform, whether it's the budget, whether it's how we support our business community or how we support working families. You need people who care about the issues, who care about the people they represent, but have the ability and the professionalism to work with others. That is as, as simple uh, a narrative around what our mandate is as elected leaders. We have to deliver results. We have to demonstrate an ability to achieve that change that people expect from us. And when you look at the leadership in this borough, when you look at what Mark John Knight has accomplished, he is a guy, a very successful businessman, who had everything going for him. He didn't need the headaches of public life. His family was doing well, his businesses were doing well, he was involved in contributing, but he saw a void in leadership. And he put himself out there, walked away from all of that to take on the headaches of public life. What do I mean by the headaches? For those of you involved in the campaign, you saw that for in order for Mark to be here today celebrating, he had to put himself and his family on the line. That people took cheap shots at him. That people accused him of things that were simply not true. 
for political points. Mark had to sit there and allow those who wanted to undermine him to say those things and, and create doubt and questions amongst his own community. Luckily, because Mark exemplifies all those things that I said earlier are important in elected official, he knew what he was getting into, he didn't listen to the haters and, and the enemies and the political opponents. He focused on the issues that mattered to the people of the district. He kept his message clear. He talked about what he was going to do. And he accomplished what we needed, which is not only a victory, but he did a dignified victory. He stood tall with his head up high, shoulder to shoulder with his family, his wife, his mother, his family members, proud of the story that the Joe Knight family has to tell, not Mark, because he never talks about himself. It's always about his family, his community, the about contributions of the Albanian community. But as Senator Klein said, he's somebody who cares deeply about every segment of the community. If you are a working man, you are more likely to get Mark's attention than one of his colleagues in business with a lot of financial gains. He is somebody who cares about the working man and woman because that's what he recognizes as himself. That's what he saw growing up in his father and his mother and his brother, the rest of the family, his sister, everybody worked together to build something. He walked away from it all to serve us, to serve this borough, to serve this city. And I'm excited. I'm excited because Mark has an opportunity now to take all those lessons and make sure that he improves the conditions of our small business community. Everybody uses that word as a punchline. Mark believes in it because it is the real backbone of our communities. When we talk about job growth and giving opportunities, it is those hardworking men and women from all parts of the world who start their mom and pop shops, who grow them into larger businesses, who buy investment properties and, and create opportunities. Those stories are the ones that we should be celebrating. Mark Jonai recognizes that some of the things we've done in the city are not giving those people a better opportunity. He's going to fight for that as a chair of the Small Business Committee. I'm excited about the leadership of Mark Jonai because he cares, not just because it says so on his truck. He has demonstrated that in everything that he does, in how he conducts himself, in how hard he works, in how hard he fights, in how he reflects the best of the bottom of the box, the best of the Albanian community. And I am so excited, Mark, to say that I'm proud of you, that I'm excited about the leadership that you bring, and that I look forward to working with you every step of the way. God bless you. Good afternoon, everybody. My job here today is to thank all of those who are given special thanks to by name. So in your journal, if you open up the page six, uh, follow along with me as I read six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Forget about that idea. Advice to everybody here, never, ever become the fourth speaker on the day. So before I came here today, I made up a list. What am I going to say about Mark? I mean, there is so much to say. I wasn't having much of a problem. And I made a couple quick notes because I wanted to speak of Mark's uh, proud Albanian heritage. Well, thank you, Jeff Klein. And I want to talk about Mark being the first Albanian in the New York City Council. Thank you, uh, gentlemen, again. And I wanted to talk about Mark being an advocate for women. Thank you, Tish James. And an advocate for small businesses. Marcos, I thank you for that. I wanted to get some gratuitous applause by saying thank you to the New York City Police Department. <laughs> or congratulating all the background of all the Albanian women that, that raised Mark and made him such a good citizen. <laughs> and lastly, I said, well, for God's sakes, if everything else is covered, I'll say thank you to his lovely wife, Roberta. <laughs> There's nothing else to say. But let me do say something about Mark, quite seriously. 
I often joke about Mark. I often say that I hate Mark Jonai because, because he works so hard. And because that makes all the rest of us look bad. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, it's the truth. He has never stopped working since he got in the state assembly. And he is always moving, always doing, always trying to find something that's going to help his constituents, always trying to find some other way to make the community that he represents a better place to live. And I tell you the truth, I've often said to him time and time again, Mark, for the sake of your own health, for the sake of the sanity of your own, of your own staff, slow down a little bit. Don't be so good. But a tribute to the man, he doesn't listen. He just continues to press his staff, he continues to press himself to do, to keep on working, to move along, to make this community a good place. We're used to having exemplary representation in the larger Frogs Neck and Pelham Bay and Morris Park, City Island, Westchester Square community. And Mark is going to continue that tradition. It used to be we had a United States Senator here in the state of New York. Senator Amato, and he used to be called the Amato, and he used to be called the Pothole Senator, because he took care of all the little things in the district, the little things block by block that people care about. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's Mark Jonai. That's the guy who's live city council. And that's the guy I'm very proud to be here today to wish him well in the city council, even though I could be home right now putting on the football game and seeing what's going on down there because the Patriots are going at it again and I want to be with, but I'd rather be here with Mark John. I, I never thought I would say that before. Congratulations, Mark and good luck. I ask that you repeat after me. I, Mark Jonai, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution of the State of New York, and the Charter of the City of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of councilman to the best of my ability. Yeah. I introduce you to the new councilman today and those that could not be here but wanted to. I thank my family, my friends, the elected, dignitaries, clergy, volunteers, supporters, voters, and my staff. Today would not have been possible without your support and your guidance. God has been good to me and my family. This country has given us so much. In public service, 
has been the most humbling and rewarding experience of my life. I'm not certain that my family would agree with that. <laughs> my friends, I stand here proud of our community, humbled by the trust you placed in me, and committed to responsibilities of serving you. But I must confess, the pins I wear on my lapel are getting harder and harder and more difficult to win. The Bronx and New York City is a place of people with an unstable spirit. It's what makes us so special and unique. It's what makes this place home. With that said, we do have many challenges ahead. From rising cost of living that leave too many struggling just to make ends meet. A mass transportation system that creates virtual transportation deserts in underserved communities. An educational system that is failing so many of our children. And an opioid crisis that has destroyed families and claimed the lives of far too many. These and other challenges are real, and they are serious. They require that we work together to help meet them head on, but meet them we will. It begins with making sure that the Bronx gets its fair share from City Hall. From small businesses, mom and pop shops, that embody the hopes and dreams of people who live trying to build a better life for themselves and improve the community to moms and dads sacrificing to make a better life for their families. Right now, it can be easier for some to travel from New York, Newark, New Jersey, to Wall Street than it can be for many Bronx sites to travel from their borough to the same city. We can do better. We have to look at common sense solutions to ease congestion on our roads and bridges during peak hours and transportation options for transit starved areas. Improve existing city ferry service to include stops along the eastern shore. If we can spend $4.4 billion on a second annual subway extension and $2 billion on a proposed Brooklyn Queens trolley, surely we can invest the time and the resources to meet the needs of transit-starved communities in this borough of the Bronx. <laughs> we must do more to help families deal with the rising costs of living, especially having an affordable place to live. In the State Assembly, I introduced the tree bill tenant rent increase exemption program to cap or freeze the rent on eligible working families. We must, do, we must do more at the city level to include implementing a real estate property tax reform that imposes a 2% cap on annual increases in real estate taxes and curb the out of control water and sewer rates. And perhaps there is no more sacred commitment that a society has than to its veterans and seniors. Its unspoken covenant, you spend a lifetime working and building your community and serving in our nation's military to protect. You should not be priced out of a decent and affordable place to live or go without services. The issue of affordable housing is one that hits working families even harder. We must do better to protect NYCHA tenants that are too often forced to live with the consequences of a mismanaged system. That's why I will propose and fight for the passage of my Every Family Matters plan on the Council. There is no such thing as a second-class family or a second-class tenant in this great city. The availability of quality, affordable housing is an issue that many feel they are facing alone. 
but as a member of both the City Council's Housing and Buildings and Public Housing Committee, I pledge to make their fight my fight. Last year, <laughs> last year, a New York Times headline read, The Bronx Quiet Brutal War with Opioids. We can no longer afford to be quiet in the face of this crisis. It is an epidemic that is hitting all of us, regardless of your background, your education, your success in love. But it's been particularly brutal here in the borough of the Bronx, where more lives are lost to overdoses than any other borough in the city. Overdoses are claiming more lives than gun violence, car accidents, and suicides combined. We must step up our efforts to combat the problem, increase investment in treatment programs to help those trying to break the cycle of abuse and crack down on those that are selling illegal drugs. Let's seek to both ruin our families and the community and neighborhoods that we live in. We must invest in the programs that will prevent our children from beginning the use of drugs and focus on their future. Last week, I was appointed the chair of City Council's Committee on Small Business. Protecting our local businesses is an issue that is near and dear to me. New York City's small businesses not only support the individuals and families that own them, but those that work there, but they also serve as anchors that provide vital services and serve as an economic engine to our communities. As a committee chair, I will seek to find solutions to help struggling businesses to keep our commercial corridors vibrant and thriving. These are tough challenges. Some are generations in the making. They won't be solved overnight. But the price of community is paid through the dedication that we must have to one another. I am confident that with the common sense solutions, we can build and leave behind a stronger Bronx, a better city for the generations that will come to call it home in the future. Working on your behalf and interests, I pledge to help make New York City a stronger, safer, improving our quality of life, making sure that it's affordable for all, and assure you that your families and your neighbors have a brighter future. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless the Ferguson Council District. God bless our great city. God bless America and all those that call it home. Thank you. Thank you for making so very so good. Isn't it exciting what's to come for the next eight years? I mean, sorry, four. <laughs>